Welcome to my newest video. I'm Albert and in just a couple short steps, I'm going to show you how to get a result like this, a completely seamless material, even with an accurate normal map and all kinds of nifty features from a sentence like this. All right, let's get started. Now, the first step you're going to need to do is make sure you have the right version of Stable Diffusion installed, or rather the right UI, meaning you need to make sure your version has tiling built in. Now, the way I would recommend doing it is following this guide. It's the first link in the description. I won't go into detail because it explains it much better than I ever could. And the way to install this changes practically every day. So I don't want my video to get old. I do promise, despite it looking a little complicated, you will be done in just a few steps and don't need to be a total pro in Git or Python to understand what's happening. Just read it carefully, do it, and you'll be done within 20 minutes and have this running. Now, next, obviously, is starting Stable Diffusion and ending up with a UI that looks something like this. We're going to work with text to image, and I'm going to tell you what the prompt needs to be for you to get a seamless texture, or rather a texture that works well for um, textures. And the secret is it needs to start with top down photo of. Top down makes it flat and makes it usable as a texture, right? Because if you want to have a texture of a wall, you take a flat front on photo of the wall. If you want the floor, you take a top down picture of the floor. So the same is true of prompts, which is why we're going with top down photo of. Now let's do something classic. Let's do cobblestone road with dirt to have some dirt in between, right? And finally, we're going to pray to the AI gods with the classics, 8K detailed intricate. I always love doing that. And we can turn the sample steps up to 50. Sampling method is good. Now the most important part, check tiling, because that's what's going to make it seamless. Then turn the batch count up to four to six, depending on how many options you want, and you can start generating. Great, and here we go. We have six different options generated for us. This one's pretty neat. It looks very natural. Looks like it's part of a um, European town or something. I could imagine it tiling quite nicely with all those different circles. There's this one. Interesting, okay. Now, if you like one of these, but want more detail or want to change up something slightly, you can do so. You can copy the seed from down here, paste it in here, and uh, turn up the sampling steps, obviously, and then adjust something slightly. And it will come out quite similar, just with minor adjustments. So um, I want this to look less sandy, right? I want to make it medieval, gray cobblestone road with dirt, intricate, maybe add some moss. And otherwise, leave it the same and just generate again. Neat, so some of these look pretty cool. I like that first one even though it's rotated and it has some nice little moss growing and these different like plates kind of. That one's nice, I like the moss. The color is much better than it was. This is kind of weird. That one looks amazing, but if you imagine it as a seamless texture, that piece of moss is just gonna tile endlessly and be so obviously tiled, so that's no good. This one could be cool, could be cool. Looks a little too dry, you know, the moss is kind of weird. And this one's a little too standard. So actually, let us go with this one. That looks kind of cool. I want the moss to pop out. So if we like this one, we can send it to extras to enlarge it. Send to extras. So here we are, resize it two or four times, depending on what we want to do, and make sure that our upscaler does real ESR GAN 4X plus, and we don't have any anime, so we can just generate that and get a bit bigger image out of it. Good, okay, it lost some of the detail. I don't love that. So just play around with these settings until you get the result you want. Now, these are decent settings. We're gonna wanna save this and call it diffuse, because that's what it is. This is our diffuse texture. And next, we're gonna go into Blender. Step one is deleting the default cube and shift a another cube into it. It is the Blender God's will. And next we can go into the shading tab and make a new material. Now I'm gonna assume you know some basics of working with textures, so I'm just gonna skip through some of them. But what we wanna do now is put in our diffuse texture. So shift A, image texture, select our image, open it, connect it with your base color, 
And now I have a good trick. Obviously, this texture is much too big. So I have the so-called Node Wrangler enabled. It's already installed in your Blender. So you can go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search Node Wrangler here, and just set that check mark right there. And that way, when you select a texture, you can press Control T and already have a mapping node and a texture coordinate node automatically attached. That's already connected to your UV socket. So that saves a lot of time. And another trick I like doing is Shift A, Value, set this value to one and connect it to my scale vector. That way I can scale my texture without having to edit all three values in the scale vector at once. And now one final thing, I see that the texture is a little rotated here, so let's just rotate the z-axis by 90 degrees, and that way it looks like this. So I can tell that our texture is pretty good as a seamless texture. It's going to look pretty slick, but obviously all we have now is a diffuse color, and that's not nearly enough. It's not three-dimensional, the roughness is all wrong, the specular is wrong, and um, you know, a normal map is missing. So next, we're going to generate a normal map with a free online tool called Smart Normap 2. Now, the link is in the description. Here you can see the URL, smart-page.net slash smartnormal, and we're going to load in our diffuse texture here. And it immediately generates our normal map. You can tell it's already pretty go going pretty well. And um, I've already tested this for you. This is the right kind of normal map for Blender. So you don't need to change any of your settings or invert anything. This will work straight in Blender. It's a so-called OpenGL normal map. Now you can turn up the bias a little bit. This basically does what the strength will do in Blender later. And since they're bricks, we can turn this up rather high, but otherwise it's perfect. So just click Save. Name it Normal. and bring it into Blender just like you did with the other. So Shift A, Image Texture, Normal. And now make sure in your color space you have non-color selected, that's important for normal maps, and plug it into your mapping vector. So it does the same thing that you've changed here as your diffuse map. Now one final thing, make sure out of the color socket, it goes into a normal map socket into the color information. And there you go. You now have a normal map installed. And you can tell it is working. It does give that little bit of extra info that it needs. You can turn up the strength if you want to. But generally, it's doing its job. Good, that's it for the diffuse and the normal maps, but what else is there? There's obviously specular, there's roughness, and in the end there's displacement to make these bricks really pop. How do we do those? Well, for specular and roughness, we could make individual maps if we wanted to in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, but I have a good shortcut. I find that using color ramps here in Blender gets the job done almost as good. So the way we do that is we're going to Shift A, color ramp and plug in the diffuse there. Now another reason I like Node Wrangler, you can preview individual nodes by holding Control Shift and then clicking the node and it will give you a nice preview. So what's coming out of this color ramp? You can see black and white. If we plug that into roughness, all the dark spots will have zero roughness, so they'll be super shiny, and all the white spots will be completely rough. How does that look? We go back to our BSDF. Weird, because obviously it's wrong. Total black doesn't happen with roughness with these bricks. So we can adjust the black here. Just bring it up a little. You know, make it a little damp. I guess it could be dirt or something, but not too damp. And the white, we leave because there can absolutely be absolute, there can totally be absolute roughness. Now we can do the same with specular. We can duplicate this color ramp and plug it into specular. And what I like to do with specular maps, we do them somewhat inverted from roughness, right? Because some spot that's not rough has a little more specular and the inverse, so we can just click here, flip color ramp, and maybe tone down the ultra white a little bit so it's not totally specular, and bring this 
back down a little bit, have it be slightly less specular from the rough parts, and go back to BSDF. And here you can see that it's working pretty well. It's still a little too wet for me, so we can bring back up the roughness a little bit here and bring this white back down a little. But in general, we now have a roughness and specular map without very much effort. So that's pretty cool. Now, what's remaining? Displacement, of course. We see all these cool texture demos and everything, and they always pop a little, and ours isn't. So what I'd like to do is actually change the shape of this. I don't want a cube. So go in there, delete your cube, put in a UV sphere, and now we're going to switch render engines. Let's go into Cycles and change the feature set to Experimental. Look at it in Cycles. You can denoise a little bit. And uh, make sure your object is shaded smooth. Go into the light a little bit. And now give the whole thing a subdivision surface modifier. Good. You'll see why in just a minute. Make sure you click Adaptive Subdivision. That's the special feature we wanted. And now we're going to use our normal map as a displacement map as well. So we put in a displacement node. Plug that in here. And plug in our normal. And now we got to make sure that our material is set up right. So nothing really happened, and that's because down here in settings of our material, in our material tab, we have displacement set to bump only. And what we want is displacement only. It's going to be a total mess, obviously. That's because it's being quite extreme. You see the scale is at 1. Let's turn that down to 0.01. It's already better. We can't really see what's happening now, though. So let's just slowly, step by step, go upwards already too much. Just give it that tiny little bit of detail that we love. And we can turn up the resolution a little bit in Levels Viewport. It's already a little three-dimensional. You can see the moss is sticking out a little bit. So that's pretty neat. Now if this isn't working too well for you, there's another way to go about it. So unplug the normal. And we're going to work with color ramps again. So make a new color ramp. Make sure it's nice and black and white. Get your diffuse, plug that in there, and now plug the color from that new color ramp into height in your displacement node. And now you're going to see it did something. It's already become a little more three-dimensional. Let's um, actually scale down this texture so you can see it better. You can really tell now that it's 3D. And here we go, with basically just a sentence put into the text-to-image algorithm of stable diffusion, then using a free online normal map tool and Blender, we were able to make a completely seamless cobblestone with moss material. Now, obviously, you can edit this a little bit. If you don't like individual parts, you can Photoshop it, adjust your prompt, or make something completely different using this workflow. This video was just supposed to give you some tips and a couple concrete steps you could do to reach your goal. My name's Albert Bosazan, and I make videos like this all the time. So if you liked it, please subscribe for more and uh, leave a like and comment if you have any questions or future video suggestions. Have fun with Stable Diffusion and Blender and see you soon.